Hi, everybody. Today we are going to do one, maybe two things. But first, we're going to do is contingencies, which are you basically take like total stock. Like if you have all the data of something qualitative, you can turn that into a numerical. So what I've kind of done with our little bioeducation data here, faux, sadly, but oh well, still kind of still kind of works out, um, is that we take, I took attendance and I said high is 90% or above, low is less. Did you pass or not? 70% or not? Do you work 20 hours or more? And this is sort of some of the core stuff that I study in this in this little mini study. So let's take a look. Now I've turned these basically numerical things into qualitatives. But what I can do with that using contingency, which is going to take us into chi-square and Fisher's tests, is say, all right, how many of you were low attenders and you failed the class? How many of you did not attend much, but you passed? High attending and you failed, high attending and you passed. Perfect. So we'll actually start with these coming up. We're going to add that third factor kind of coming up over here a little bit. But to begin, this is going to be a little, this is going to be a little friendlier. All right. So you would go to graph pad. You would want to ask it, give me contingency. Because what we're going to want is sort of, right now we're going to start with a two by two, as you can tell it. Did you pass the class? Did you attend? So it's going to be, it should be pretty easy. So here, I'm going to actually have to say um, low attendance. Yep. And then high attendance. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's going to auto. Now yeah, it's auto formatting for me. Sorry. There we go. Yeah. So as good as GraphPad is, again, it can be fairly clunky sometimes. Um, and then we're going to say passed. And then we're going to say failed, of course. All right. So from here, low attending and failed. Let's take a look. Those 33 are right there. Low attending and passed. Those 34 are right there. High attendance and pass. That was a high 88. Good job. And then seven failed and you had high attendance. Dang it. Okay. So let's kind of just take a look at what this is going to give us. It's not the prettiest thing on the planet. See the little bar graph? Like it's kind of gross. Um, there are situations where you could probably, yeah, you could probably stack. Like that's fine. But notice that like aesthetically, this is one of the weakest sections of all of Prism. Okay. I'm just going to go with a nice little normal here. Um, I'm trying to think low attendance pass failed maybe that maybe that looks better yeah you can decide which one you want to put like as the as the legend versus the axis that's fine again as you can tell like not super great the key though with this is that you do have access to a really quick and easy test called a fisher's test you can get a very clean p value with this so you would click this little analysis it would be in the analyze button but it's also a shortcut um, I can add relative risk in here. I can add an odds ratio. Those of you who have taken stats, um, you'll enjoy those numbers a little bit. Do a Fisher's exact test because we are limited to a two by two grid. Given that, when we run this test, what it's saying is, is there deviancy in any, in one of these plots, basically? Is there is there deviancy from what would be expected, which would be that all four populations would be equal, right? Now, given that there is not, it's an extremely unlikely chance that this would have happened by random, we can use this test very cleanly to ascribe that attendance is significantly associated with failure. This is one way to say that, and maybe I'm oversimplifying. But regardless, you have some great metrics right here that Prism gives you. I think I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Row totals. So like, that's a good way to say, like, if you passed... 72% of you that passed were high attendance, right? Now, if you look at failed, it's kind of the opposite swing right there, right? So the reason the p-value was so low is that these would have all just kind of been 50, like 50-50 50, 50 here, 50-50 50, 50 here. That's what the test expects when you put in data. But since that didn't happen, that's what we got. Column total, so low attenders. If you were a low attender, you passed 50% of the time, but you failed 50% the other time. If you're a high attender, look at that big guy right there. 92%, you're going to pass if you attend like over 90% of classes. It's pretty good. Dang it. Um, grand total can be tough because remember, we're not working with equal populations here, right? The total population of high attenders is 95 versus 67 that were low attenders. Technically, the grand total section can be a little, it's helpful, 
but it's less helpful than isolating by your column variable or your row variable array. So like I said, this is pretty hideous to look at. There's nothing that we, I mean, you could make the bars a little nicer, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the weird part. See what this actually is going to look pretty good as? Probably going to look pretty dang good as two pie graphs side by side. And what I usually do is take contingency data, put them in here, make sure that I've got good stats. And I'm like, all right, there's my stats array. What you can do is turn, like I said, pie graphs, I think kind of discourage sometimes, but whatever. This is from one of my cancer papers. This basically is just saying, okay, if you are patients that don't have a mutation in MIC gene wild type, patients that do have a MIC gene mutation, Response means you make it. Progression means you die or have an event. Red, as you can tell, there's a difference there. And people like percentages, even though that's not strict, you know, sometimes not strictly what Fishers is going to show or like really get at it in the graph pad way. So taking this into a pie, and as you can tell, the populations in these pies are actually proportional. So see how the MIC population is just lower total. Um, this is really, I think this is always a really nice way to do things. And especially with a Fishers test where you only have two by two. I think it's pretty nice. So let's, uh, I don't know how I'm going to label this. It's going to be really annoying. All right. I should have, yeah, I should have thought this through and like labeled it into a grid. Now I want to introduce a third factor. And that's kind of what I'm zooming in on here. I'm now introducing that third factor that's in here. Did you work 20 or more hours during the year? So what we've got now are these columns right here. We have eight groups to deal with. Now we're going to see, we're going to split this up. And now it's going to be like, I think it's, what is it going to be like a two, like a two by three, uh, two by four type of thing. Yeah. So, all right. All right. You're going to have to sit here and with me while I put this in. I'm really sorry. Maybe I'd like speed the video up at this point, but like, if you're on YouTube, just kind of click through this part. Cause yeah, I, I, I don't know if I really thought this through super well. Uh, okay. Let's do... Let's do past and let's do failed. And now we're going to say, all right, past versus failed. And now I can say over here. Um, oh, you know, actually what I should have done. Yeah. Past versus failed, low attendance, high attendance. But in this case, now what we're going to do here, watch this. We're going to have to do this. Uh, low attendance, but these are 0 to 19 hours. High attendance, and these are 0 to 19. Oh, come on, 0 to 19 hours. Sorry, I should have set this up. Low attendance, but these are people that work 20 hours a week. High attendance, but these, again, are people that work 20 hours a week. All right, so let's, um, yeah, let's pain <laughs> let's painfully match this up and... Uh, Let's see what, get get this rolling here. I'm 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 kind of really sorry. So again, yeah, keep skipping if you're if you're watching and you want to hurry up. All right, I think I got everybody now. All right, low attendance, low attending, and you failed, but you were 20 plus. Okay, that was 21. Low attending, but you failed. Whoops. Yeah, but you were 20 plus. All right, low attending failed. But you were zero to 19, that was 12, okay. Low attending, but you passed. You were zero to 19, that was 22 of you. Low attending, passed. But you had 20 plus, it was only 12 of you. Okay, and by you, I mean nobody, sorry. All right, you attended high attendance, but you failed. And you were 20 plus, so that was four. This was going to be three high attendance pass at zero to 19. Okay. And then failed. Let's see. High attending, but you passed. High, all right. High attending and you passed. Oh, dang it. See, that's what that one was. High attendance and you passed. Zero to 19. Oh my God. I should have just paused the recording. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to pause it now. Oh, God dang it. Uh, all right. We're back. That was pain. I'm sorry. All right, so notice now that we've added different columns, basically, and we're now out of a two by four. Watch this. Fisher's test is not going to be working anymore. 
Because now we're going to start to see that we're doing, technically we're doing multiple factors at this point. Oh, nope, come back here. Now we want to probably do a chi-square test in this case. Um, as far as options go, most things are pretty standard there. Hooray. What a chi is going to do is say that, and that p-value that we have right here now, okay, what a chi is going to do is say that somewhere in one of the factors, in something that's happening, somebody is different. Something, one of these groups is now different suddenly. It does not say strictly that working 20 hours a week is the cause of failure or attendance, because now the test can only say something is off in the data. That's it. It's a great first hunt, but it is not something like if I take this p-value and I'm like, oh, gross, like copy paste, let's put it in here. And I use this and say like p-value is that passing and failing is totally dependent on attendance. That's not super accurate. That's sort of an oversimplification and it happens a lot in data. So that's why I'm kind of harping on this. So once you're here at these chi's, um, you do have some choices here, but like I said, like you can tell, like I've got not a ton of like statistical choices here. So maybe we would do something like that. Oof, that's a little rougher. I don't like how that looks, but I wanted to show you. Yeah, let's see. And now it's going to say, so for example, like if I try to do a Fisher's here, see how it's not, it's kind of getting angry. and doesn't have the same like data sets that I used to have. It's not super thrilled with that to say the least. But if you guys have taken a chi-square class, again, we're working with four things. Degrees of freedom thus is three right there. That big chi-square, that 44, that's a pretty big number that shows like the expected versus observed. Essentially the expected would have been that everybody's even in all eight of these groups. We did not see that. Hence, that's what we're looking for here. So again, not the prettiest thing on the planet to, to graph. Go back in time to the video where I do a heat map. That sometimes can help. But at the same time, remember that these populations are not super duper, like totally even as well. The test can sort of try to account for that. But again, that's when things start to get a little messy and a little complicated. Not to say that if I'm looking at this, I don't see some patterns here that basically attendance is always going to, and attendance and failure rate is typically going to be higher when it's in that 20 plus range as when you're failing. So in the past range, low attending pass, but they're working less. There's more passers, failures. This is a small population. I wouldn't infer too much there, but like high attending passed and you didn't work. Yep. There's more of you than there are in that one. That would be my sort of little spin tour on on things. Oops, who's texting me? Scout. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this now. This is kind of our little spin into contingencies. I want to do something a little bigger, a little grander. The other section of this video, which I'm imagining most people actually ended up coming for. Multiple variables. This is a new prism feature. It is wonderful, but a little clunkier than typical prism. So consider this sort of the halfway moment in the video. And if you want to pause and like consider this like a split here, not, not too bad. In fact, I can actually just make that on my own split. <laughs> 